untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a Tamiyo Completed Sage, a 5-mana, five 5 loyalty planeswalker with the completed ability, meaning we can either spend 2 life to cast Tamiyo for 4 mana, or we can play her for 5 mana, but if we play her for 4 mana and 2 life, then she will come into play with only 3 loyalty as opposed to 5, so making use of that Phyrexian mana then her plus one can tap up to one target artifact or creature that won't untap during its controller's next untap step. The minus X will exile target a non-land permanent card with mana value X from our graveyard. We get to create a token that's a copy of that card. And the minus seven, which is pretty achievable, creates Tamio's Notebook, a legendary colorless artifact token, saying spells we cast cost two generic mana less to cast, and it can tap to draw a card. So incredibly powerful if that can stick around. So the goal of the deck is to try and play Tamiyo ahead of schedule, so we can try and leverage the plus one and get to the minus seven ultimate as quickly as possible. And then besides Tamiyo, of course, we're ramping into other powerful things like Koma, Cosmos Serpent, the seven mana 6-6 six, six legendary serpent that's uncounterable. At the beginning of each upkeep, including the opponent's upkeep, we get to make a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token, and then we can sacrifice another serpent to tap target permanent and its activated abilities so won't be able to be activated this turn, or Koma gains indestructible until end of turn, so that dodges a few removal spells in the format. And then uh, taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got a few new additions from Kamigawa, including a Careful Cultivation, a 3-mana Enchantment Aura, although we're not really planning to cast it as an aura very often. Instead, we can use the Channel ability for 1 and a green, discard Careful Cultivation to make a 1-1 green Human Monk creature token that can tap to add green mana to our mana pool. So we can essentially make an uncounterable instant speed mana creature, which is why we're playing this over some of the other two mana options. And then in a pinch we could technically get back cultivation with Tamiyo from the graveyard as well, although I don't expect to do that very often. And then in the mana base we also have a few new additions from Kamigawa with Boseju, which can be used as a removal spell for artifacts, enchantments or non-basic lanes, and the Soaring City, which can be used as a bounce spell. And then Colossal Sky Turtle also gives us a bit of interaction at 2 mana if we channel it for 1 and a blue to return target creature to its owner's hand. And we can also channel it for green to get back a card from our graveyard, maybe get back a Planeswalker. And then of course at 7 mana a 6-5 flyer with Ward 2 is also quite reasonable. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got some additional cheap interaction with Fading Hope to complement our turtle to bounce a creature potentially scry one as well. Neverwinter Dried can be played on one, sacrificed on two to search a basic forest to help us ramp. So we do need to play it on turn one for it to truly shine, but then it might be better than a two mana ramp creature as we get to put the land in place so it's less vulnerable to expensive removal spells. Then at 2 mana, the full playset of Lotus Cobra alongside Careful Cultivation rounds out the early accelerants with Landfall generating 1 mana of any color we want. Then we've got Jewelry Disruption, can be used as a counter spell or a tapped land. And the fact that we have Careful Cultivation as well as Neverwinter Dried that can let us pass a turn on turn 2 with 2 mana available makes it easier to keep up Jewelry Disruption at the same time. If we need to counter something we can, if not, we can either make a 1-1 one -one Monk token or sacrifice our Dried. And then at 4 mana, since we are skipping the 3 drops, assuming we can ramp from 2 into 4, we've got our full playset of Quandrix Cultivator, a 3-4 that can also ramp by searching up a forest or island, and that also comes into play untapped, so potentially still lets us cast a spell afterwards, like a Fading Hope, or if we have additional mana, potentially a 2 drop as well. Then a Gnarled Professor synergizes quite nicely with Tamiyo as a 4-mana 5-4 Trampler that when it enters a battlefield lets us learn. And of course we've got a 7-sideboard lesson to choose from, including Sciences, Teachings for Card Draw, Double Containment Breach since there's quite a few artifacts and enchantments worth killing. We've got Introduction to Prophecy and then Double Mascot Exhibition as an extra win condition. So those are all the lessons we can get with our Professor, and because Professor is a pretty good 4-drop that tends to get killed, we can also potentially get it back with Tamiyo if we play her on turn 5 using the minus X ability, get back our Professor right away, get to learn once again, and have a nice 5-4 to protect our Planeswalker, so playing valuable 4-drops is a good combo with Tamiyo. 
And then what better for drop than Esika's Chariot? The legendary vehicle is joined by a pair of 2-2 cat tokens. This is still the standard version, so not the alchemy nerfed version. And then when the chariot attacks, crew cost is 4, we can potentially copy a token. So then can copy our cat token, could even copy our monk token, and even the mascot exhibition tokens later in the game. And then for additional card draw we have two copies of Memory Deluge, which can be flashed back from the graveyard for 7 mana, which is quite reasonable in a ramp deck. And then Renan 7, another powerful planeswalker alongside Taimyo at 5 mana, can make a large tree folk token with reach, can also copy that with Esika's Chariot. So the dream curve is turn 3 Chariot, turn 4 Renan 7, make a tree folk, that can crew the Chariot, and then the Chariot can make a copy of that tree folk token right away, so another powerful play from standards past. And then the plus one can provide additional lands to help us ramp, and the zero ability could also be used, especially in combination with Lotus Cobra, to put additional lands in play, to maybe give us a small mana boost to be able to cast something expensive on the following turn. And then we've already discussed Coma. Another win condition, of course, are the creature lands, with Hall of the Storm Giants turning into a 7 7 with Ward 3, and Lair of the Hydra, another good mana sink. And then plenty of basic lands to search up, in addition to the Pathway and Dream Root Cascade. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn to Cultivation, turn 3 either Cultivator or Chariot. And then Chariot into Ren and 7 could be quite exciting if we can pull it off. So probably no real reason to play Cascade. I guess there is if we draw Jory Disruption. We might want to keep that up turn 2. Opponent Red-White. Some sort of artifact deck. And now we get to play around Sorcery Speed Removal. Opponent's incentivized to tap out. So they're less likely to kill our Monk. Opponent still passes, so hopefully there's no removal here, since we really need that monk to survive. Uh, sadly, a Voltage Surge takes care of it. So that ruins our game plan quite a bit. But uh, we can still play a 4-drop next turn. And then Boseju could also be used. Yeah, actually, killing the Apprentice doesn't sound like a bad idea. The problem is we might be short on lands to cast our spells then. And technically, Renan 7 could make a reach creature to block it, or a Professor can learn for an answer. So, while it is tempting, I think I should hang on to Buseju as a land. Alright, now I can Professor get an answer for their artifact. Or I can Chariot into Renan 7, which is maybe better. Showdown can place additional counters on the Apprentice. Finds Portable Hole, so that's a nice answer to my tokens that I can potentially generate here. Although I'll be able to make two of them. Alternatively, I can just play Quandrix Cultivator. And then I guess that's it. Making two tree folk tokens might still be worth it. If they have double portable holes, that could get awkward. And then they could kill my planeswalker as well. Close call. Problem is I can't use a Professor Ends destroy something since we don't have the mana for it. And if I want to use Boseju, that also doesn't leave many other options. So I think Ren is still the play. And then I probably want to crew Chariot with the cats. So we have two reach creatures back to potentially block. Although there's a good chance that the apprentice becomes large enough where trying to block it with the tree folk and uh, first strike's not gonna work out. But then we can potentially let Ren and Seven go, keep our reach creature for later and potentially copy it again with the Chariot. Automaton only leaving up one white mana, so they can at most cast one portable hole here.
rabbit battery into portable hole, and then I guess they can give the automaton haste as well. Also, then the tree folk could block the apprentice. So our opponent's gonna equip the apprentice anyway. And go after Ren, that's fine. So now I guess they could block my chariots with the automaton, so that was the idea. Although Taimyo could potentially help out. Now I guess the automaton has ward, so we wouldn't be able to tamp that down with Tamio. Although we could keep the apprentice tamped down, then they can move the equipment. Things get pretty interesting. Tamio could also get back Ren and Seven. That's an option. I also don't mind going for Cultivator, get a land, make another monk token. And then we'll potentially have more mana to play Professor and start destroying artifacts. Question is if I want to trade Chariot to get an extra Tree Folk or not. I don't think I do. So let's go for Cultivator. Get an Island. And pass. One potential concern is the second small of the Skyclaves. Uh, portable hole sadly gets rid of my tree folk now. So another mall could be lethal. Mechanic puts another count from apprentice. But our opponent's finally on empty. So we can hope to stabilize here. Could have also kept the cultivation to give a creature reach. Another interesting use case here. But let's go for the mana. Alright, so if I go for Professor, I can destroy the Maul. Which is the most threatening card right now. So I think that's the plan. Another Maul of the top could be lethal, but not much I can do about it now. And then we actively want the Professor to die so we can learn again if we get it back with Tamio. Opponent takes three. They could animate Den of the Bugbear as well here. Right, they're going to move the battery into a 1 1 haste. But no attacks. Alright. So, can uh, play Tamio and get back run and 7. And then now making two huge tree folk might be worth it, even if that means losing chariot. Or I can Tamio plus and hope they don't top deck Maul for another turn. Um. I think making the tree folk is probably safest. This is also a token. So interestingly, Chariot could copy the Planeswalker. So, can crew chariots, probably tapping Professor, so we keep more creatures around in case Rapun tries to go wide. Chariot can attack. And then I guess copying the Planeswalker or copying the token is kind of the same, but it's kind of cool to do this, so I'll try it. Their lesson. 
put in blocks. That happens. Another time you could eventually get back the uh, chariot as well. Alright, now with two 8 8 reach creatures, I feel a little bit better. And then Ren can start plussing to try and pull us ahead. If we mill over our flashback card, we can play that as well. Ooh, Amiria's Call making two flying angels makes the team indestructible. Well, that's why reach is so important. But now we're much closer to being in trouble again. Someone's on an 8 8. They could have tried equipping a flyer, but I guess still doesn't have a great attack here. So I can jump either with a monk or a cat. The extra mana could still come in handy. Alright, so we'll plus. And yeah, we hit a deluge in the graveyard, perfect. So, probably fine to flash it back now, as opposed to potentially keeping up Hall. Opponent's got how many attackers? Six. What card can I find with deluge that I still want to play here? Probably nothing too relevant, and if it's an instant like Fading Hope, I can still cast it in the opponent's turn. So yeah, I'll pass. Smith could find another Maul. Finds another Apprentice instead, that's fine. Alright, the game goes on, but I'm hoping this Deluge can pull us ahead, maybe find a powerful Curve Topper. Another time it would be nice. Alright, there's Tamio and Professor could maybe find another way to destroy an artifact or enchantments. Also something to be said for Soaring City to maybe bounce a creature. I think getting Professor is fine. Another Deluge, perfect. So Tamio could start plussing to eventually even get back Coma if we don't want to make a spellbook. Professor could try and destroy the Automaton, so I can maybe start getting more aggressive. There's a lot of options. Yeah, let's go after the Automaton. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand seems keepable. Probably have to play Disruption Tapped, turn to Cobra, hope it survives, turn 3 Chariot. That's the plan. Put on a green white enchantments. Okay, so if I play another Cobra first, I won't have the mana to play chariots, so we'll do it this way. And then now that we have chariot in play, I don't mind trading Cobra for Naturalist, since the Naturalist is quite scary. So potentially 4 mana for enchantments. They can still play a 3-drop. And a Borrow Time can answer Chariot, yeah. Sky Turtle sadly only bounces creatures, so we won't be able to bounce the Borrow Time to get our Chariot back. So what's the play here? Well, Cobra sets up Coma next turn at least, and if they don't have more Borrow Times we could be okay. Don't think I'm interested in bouncing any of the naturalists right now. So maybe just send one cat, since I don't really want to trade Cobra anymore. And then we keep a cat back to prevent a naturalist from hitting us.
Weaver pumps the naturalists. And a wedding announcement can start making tokens. Restoration, okay. Well, they're down to one card in hand, and as long as that's not an answer for coma, we could be fine. If the naturalists attack, I could bounce the weaver and then trade a cat for a naturalist, which seems decent. Although next turn they can get their two drop back. So it's of limited value to us. Um, how bad is it if they copy the restoration next turn? I guess there's no two drop to get back. So yeah, I guess we'll take six actually. Opponent draws with announcements. And we'll play Coma. Opponent can just get back their planes. Another announcement. Could see them attack just to draw more cards with announcements to try and find an answer for Koma. Yep. So we'll save the Koma's coil, double block like this. Opponent will get to draw two end of turn. But now that we get to untap with Sky Turtle, I could bounce Coma in case of another borrow time to try and protect it. Weaver actually copying the announcement to draw one more. That's nice. Ooh, and a Tamyo. All right, so we've got options. If I play Tamyo, I wouldn't be able to keep up Turtle, which might be important. Although I would be able to lock down the Weaver. Now that being said, Weaver wouldn't be able to copy announcement drawing cards. So at most they get an extra token. So that doesn't seem super important. So yeah, I think we keep up the Sky Turtle. And uh, we can make an extra token end of turn as well. Hallowed Haunting is a scary card that resolves. Another Weaver makes a spirit. We'll see if they want to attack or if they fear interaction. Because we could ambush the Weaver by bouncing one of their enchantments here. So we have to bounce either Weaver or Architect to remove them from seven enchantments. We'll bounce the Weaver, I guess. And we get to ambush. Go and make some more tokens. Alright, so what does Tamiya do for me? Can tap a creature down. Opponent's got three blockers. I could tap something down with the Koma's Coil as well. Nothing to really get back with Tamiya. Yeah, I assume tapping down Architects is fine. And then if I tap one additional creature down, two blockers, opponent can jump, trade, take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 exactly. I 
thing that checks out. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Alright, sweet. So, close gamer against green white enchantments, but Koma steals the show. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand. Cultivation into chariot. Always nice. And then cultivator can ramp us towards Koma. Now let's see what we're up against. A red deck. So they could still have instant speed removal for our monk. I think I do prefer it over playing Cobra, even though Cobra has higher upside if it survives. Ah, Magda. So we get to have our chariot here. And then next turn could maybe go Cobra, play a land, play Cultivator. Or Cultivator, play a land, play Cobra. Amounts to pretty much the same. Burgi, okay. Maybe a Bard class deck with all these legendaries. Another Cobra. Alright, now we definitely want a Cobra first. So that way I'll be able to actually play the author Cobra afterwards. Get an island. Make green mana. Play Cobra. And now we're just a land away from Koma. Can crew chariot with the Cobras. And just send chariots. I guess I could have also copied the monk to guarantee coma next turn. Maybe that was better. Although now if we draw land we're still happy and if we draw a spell we can cast it. So not a bad board on turn 4 here. Isika, yep. So now their legendaries can make mana. Serpent's got a pretty nice start themselves. Magda makes two mana by making a treasure. So next turn could be scary for us. It looks like a Naya Bard class deck. Luckily they're still missing the signature card. Because once they do, their deck can be incredibly explosive. Yeah, partners can add some counters. So now Chariot's not going to have an easy time attacking and will actually need Koma. So, yeah. Could still be in quite a bit of trouble here. Despite her great start. Disciple. Yeah, can give haste, start making dragons. And of course Modified plays quite well with uh, partners. Isika could still tap for mana, but there's nothing left. Alright, found a land, so not punished for not copying the monk. So I can play Koma. And then... I could still crew chariots. And copy a cat, and if it trades for any one of their creatures, that's fine. And if they block with a Sika, we got a free cat. Could also get a little bit more aggressive here. Next turn, I could potentially try and uh, tap down Goro Goro and remove its abilities with the Comas Coil. 
Yeah, let's get more aggressive here. I need to press my advantage while I have it. So now if they want to double block chariots, we get more damage in. Points at 8. Now what if we use the Koma's Coil on a Sika? I guess it would still have the ability to give other creatures the mana ability, so I don't think that would be very helpful. So I think we wait and see what opponent does, and then we might end up using Koma on the Disciple. So they can start making dragons. Ooh, Kodama. So modified creatures have Trample. Okay, another legendary creature to go with Bard class, a deck we should probably revisit soon. So it doesn't seem like I need to use the coil on the Disciple here. Yes, because Chariot can also copy the coil tokens. Opponent's got one card left. Kodama 5-5. Five, five. And our opponent's just gonna pass. Alright, get another coil. And I could fire up a huge Lair of the Hydra. So let's counter mana real quick. Eight mana floating, plus one potentially from the monk. So I could make an 8-8 eight eight Hydra or a 7-7 seven seven to keep the monk back just in case. I guess an eight powered Hydra threatens lethal, so it might be worth it to sink the extra mana into it. And yeah, opponent seen enough with the Comas coils and chariot to potentially copy them. We could remove quite a few blockers and force the opponent to chump with their more valuable creatures. So yeah, Koma once again steals the show on the back of a nice explosive start of Monk into Chariot. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand. Cobra into potentially turn 3 Tamyo if we use the completed ability. Opponent on a white deck. With this hand, we prefer playing against a creature deck as opposed to a more controlling strategy. All right, Aspirant means, yeah, Tamyo looks good here. Alternatively, could play Dryads, so I can play Tamyo with more loyalty next turn, which does make it easier to get to the ultimate. And then Fading Hope still deals with the Aspirants. Yeah, maybe that's actually worth it. So should have made green mana for Dryads. I guess we'll just uh, sacrifice here. Get a forest. And then I could trade Cobra for Aspirants, since we can play Time Your regardless now. And then still keep up Fading Hope, bounce their next creature, and then hopefully Tamyo can start locking down the one creature that's left. Adeline resolves, and then I guess I might as well bounce the Aspirin now so they can't put the counter on Adeline. Bottom Islands. Although Adlin could do a good job of pressuring Tamyo here. If they find other creatures to sneak and attack in. We'll attack. 
Could get back a dried with Taimyo, but probably not going to be necessary. And even if the partners show up, at least they wouldn't be able to attack with Adelin. It's going to be Sigarda, big flyer. Alright, so probably plus on Sigarda, and then next turn between Lair and my two Cobras, I've got quite a few blockers for Adlin, and then we can try and minus seven Tamyo, and hopefully that carries us to victory. Could also get more aggressive and simply animate Lair for what would be five here. Hit my point for nine down to seven. But then our opponent starts snowballing with Adlin. Time is going to lose loyalty. That might get a little bit messy. So I'm just going to pass. Don't expect our opponent to have too many answers to Tamyo's artifact here. There's the partners. And an initiate. Ooh, initiate could destroy my artifact, sadly. So not what I wanted to see at all. Opponent gets an extra token. Humans get plus one plus one from Sigarda, so good synergy with the partners as well. And yeah, all of a sudden this hopeful initiate threatens to destroy my notebook and our hopes and dreams with it, basically. So it can animate Lair for three. Can eat a token at least. Or I can try and triple block initiate, but then of course, Tamiya dies. So, this is probably my best bet. And then hope to draw an answer for initiates. Although, not liking my chances anymore. Deluge could go digging pretty deep. Yeah, I guess we'll make a notebook and... I have learned all I cannot unwrite can play a Deluge for two after drawing... Cobra. Play that first. Finding Professor and Cascade. Funnily enough, Deluge does get a little bit worse with Notebook, because we have to just take the top two cards. So, two mana Professor is not bad. Can learn for teachings. Could go for mascot exhibition, although that's probably not going to compete with the opponent's creatures. And cultivation. Okay. Well, we got to have our fun with the notebook at least before our opponent's going to annihilate us. So good to see Tamio in action. At some point in the deck I had the 7 mana giant that bounces permanence back as a nice way to reset the board, but of course it would also bounce the notebook. So it wasn't incredibly helpful. Brutal Cathar can exile Professor. And partners to give it haste. Yeah, against these Naya creature decks, you really just need a board wipe to stand a chance, since they just put so much pressure on you. But they can be pretty vulnerable to sweepers, as their deck is basically all creatures. So, am I dead? Do I have to chum block already? I assume I do. What am I hoping to draw? I'm taking 10, 17, 19 down to 1. Can keep my Cobra. Although I don't see how we recover from this. Sky Turtle. Probably not going to be good enough here. 
Can bounce Cathar, get my professor back, learn. Still doesn't uh, really get me anywhere. Opponent's at 16. Can I deal 16 damage? Not quite. So, I guess we'll have some fun here. Get a mascot exhibition. Play it. Pass a turn. And our opponent should be able to attack for the win here. Put some counters on Sigarda, which already flies and tramples. So that gets past her inkling. And that should be game. Alright. Naya Human seems like a tough matchup. Don't expect to win this one very often. But maybe with a notebook in play, a few extra turns, we could have found a coma or some other interaction. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand's got a ton of ramp. Turn 1 Dryad, double Cobra, Cultivator. We're just missing something to ramp into. So is it still keepable? Probably. Let's see what our opponent is up to. Turn 1 Hive. Play Dryads. And then we might be better off sacking the Dryad over playing Cobra. Alright, so a red-black... Blood Sacrifice deck. So, do we still think our opponent's gonna kill our Cobra if we play it here? Think maybe it's worth a risk then? Because if we do have our Cobra stay in play, then uh, we might be able to play Cultivator, followed by either Sacking Dried or playing another Cobra. And even if they kill Cobra, I can play a follow-up, play a land, sacrifice Dryad, which is still pretty mana efficient. Alright, Soul Ripper. Okay, so we get to have our fun here. Play Cultivator. Get a land. And then if I sag Dried, I'll be one short of playing Cobra, so I'll just play Cobra. And hope there's no Meat Hook Massacre. Although that would kill their own Bloodcaster at least. Opponent can crew the Soul Ripper. I'll take four. Although trading for Cultivator wouldn't be bad either. Opponent does sacrifice Bloodcaster, makes it more likely that a Meat Hook Massacre is incoming, which I guess makes me want to double block. Just hedging in case of the worst case here. And there's a Massacre for one. So that stunts her growth quite a bit. Can just go for a memory deluge. And then could main phase it in case I pick up a one drop. Or I could wait to threaten keeping up Lair of the Hydra for what it's worth. Other opponent would probably still attack into it with a Den of the Bugbear. And then Deluge hopefully finds one of our Planeswalkers. Yep, yeah, then gets activated. I could trade for Hydra. And then next turn I can still Deluge. They'll still have Hive of the Eye Tyrant to work with. But it does get rid of one of their creature lands. 
Or we can deluge, probably should have cast it before the den got to attack in case we find a fading hope to bounce it. I think I want to keep the lair, so let's just deluge. No fading hope, but a Tamyo. Although not the best against creature lands, although I could get back a cultivator with it. And then Koma seems good. Koma could still die to another Meat Hook Massacre for 6, but that's pretty far away. So, Tamio, get back Cultivator. And then I still have the mana to potentially make a 1 1 at instant speed. That seems good. Alright, so if they go for the Menace land, we can still double block it and next run play Koma. And especially now that we have a Koma, we want to deny as many lands as possible, so we make it more difficult for them to potentially play Meat Hook for 6, which is the main way they have of answering Koma. They can exile my Deluge as well, but they go for Cobra, so they were maybe a little bit hasty there with Exile. And we get to double block, perfect. Hive is used to exile creatures, but every now and then gotta go for the flashback card. So Tamio can plus on the token. Play Koma. And I guess we can attack. Their opponent's facing quite the uphill battle now. Time you can get back Cobra or Dryad as well. Alright, opponent cycles their Mire in the hopes of getting back a creature. And a Bloodcaster it is, but still not going to be able to defeat Koma and Tamio combined. Alright. So yeah, that was a quick and dirty one. But it uh, goes to show that once we get to play Tamio, we can usually find a way to get good value from it. And that's the reason why we want all those powerful 4-drops, so that if they do get answered, we can still get them back. And then have a Planeswalker left over, which is typically where you want to be in Standard. So overall, Blue-Green Ramp, a solid archetype, although I'm sure there's variations where you could play the Cyclone Summoner as well, although that one doesn't synergize very well with Tamio, so you kind of have to pick your lane and stick with it, but for now Koma was an awesome curve topper. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.